Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about failure to thrive. Failure to thrive. Some call it poor weight gain. Okay, let's go. Okay, when we're dealing with growth charts, we're going to go through a lot of pieces of information, but it will be wise to start from here. Get the growth chart. See the pattern. Okay, then what is the genetic constitution or the familiar or the hereditary nature here? Have you seen the mom, the dad? Are they small before thinking that this child is too small? We need to consider that. The race, the ethnicity, okay, the geographical location, and the beliefs, parental or religious beliefs, other kids in the family. And what is the growth pattern of those other kids? We'll start from there and move on. We can use the growth chart and wait for length, particularly the percenta interpretation as follows. A, a percenta less than two is equal to underway. Greater than two and less than 98 is healthy weight. Greater than or equal to 98 is overweight. So with that, you can just use the growth chart to determine that this child is underweight, or no, it's within normal weight, or this child is overweight, using the growth chart alone. Children under three years, are expected to gain weight in the following fashion. The first three months, that is zero to three months, they are expected to gain between 26 to 21 grams per day. Then the next three to six months, they are expected to gain between 17 to 18 grams per day. And the next six to nine months is 12 to 31 grams per day. And the, nine to 12 months is nine grams per day. And one to three years, the expectation is that they will gain seven to nine grams per day. Poor weight gain, also called weight fortune or fortune growth. Sometimes that can be the only concern, that is the weight issue is the only concern, but the hair circumference and linear growth may be as affected as well, and they are apparently short stature. Also, we may be dealing with immune deficiency. Still on poor weight gain, uh, poor weight gain may lead to permanent brain damage, and if this is happening in an advanced country, then we need to look for the cause or causes. Someone will ask me, what about poor countries? Well, in less advanced countries, we may easily and sometimes erroneously conclude that it is due to malnutrition. Probable causes, inadequate feeding. Inadequate feeding could be as a result of poor technique in feeding that child, or the caregiver is bad or there's poverty, or the child indulges in fat diet, eating just one type of food every day, or we are feeding the child with non-nutritious food, and that will lead to no balanced diet or lack of it, or we are dealing with not appropriate food for the age, or this is a child that is still you know, three months, six months, but not breastfed. Or we're dealing with a child that is a picky eater. Will not just eat anything provided, but anything he or she wants is the only thing she would like to eat. Or we're dealing with gastroesophageal reflux disease, or there is stress in the family, or the child has 
second problem might be because of illness or physical deformity like cleft lips and polyps. We might be dealing with malabsorption. In case of lactose intolerance, milk allergies, celiac disease, biliary atresia, persistent vomiting, gastroenteritis, pylori stenosis, diarrhea, or necrotizing enterocolitis. All these will lead to loss of nutrients, either through vomiting or diarrhea or inability to swallow. Increased usage of nutrient, that is, the child is well fed, but some medical conditions around is making the child to use the nutrient more than what uh, the child could retain to build the weight, like hyperthyroidism, that is increased metabolic rate here, malignancy, chronic inflammatory bowel disease, renal tract infection, tuberculosis, galatosemia, diabetes mellitus, cystic fibrosis, and congenital heart defect. Other issues include anorexia, constipation, abortion problems, psychosocial issues, cerebral palsy, and pain. The medical risk factors here could be prematurity. Okay and developmental delay, intrauterine growth restriction, congenital anomalies like cleft lift and palate, chromosomal anomalies, toxins in utero like alcohol giving us fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, smoking with intrauterine growth restriction in utero. Other risk factors include touch, that is, infection in pregnancy, lead poisoning, anemia, certain beliefs that will dictate what the parents will give the child, social isolation, poor parenting skills, street drugs in the parents, abuse at home, maybe their spousal abuse, intimate partner violence, and the child is now facing the consequences. Note, inadequate intake with psychosocial issues are the main causes of failure to try. I repeat, inadequate intake, that is either from the production that is given the food, the food is not there, right? It's not there. Or the feeding pattern is not good. Or what we are giving the child is not appropriate or the child is not having nutrient, that's inadequate intake, or all, all those are taken, but there's malabsorption somewhere. Mm -hmm. Lactose intolerance, you no know, washroom or toilet or joints, depending on where you're on the surface of your head all the time, bush, or persistent vomiting, pylori stenosis somewhere, all those will affect the intake that goes into the system. Then psychosocial issues, like you no know, poverty in the family, bad caregiver, depression in the mother, you no know, family disharmony, and so on and so forth. All those combined together are the main causes of failure to thrive. The other factors are medical issues, like what is going on inside the child, like cystic fibrosis, and so on. Diagnosis. Of course, the diagnosis will start from the history. History of diarrhea, constipation, because constipation will lead to decreased appetite, abdominal pain, vomiting, gagging, chronic otitis media. That is a sign of decreased immunity. If it is becoming recurrent, right? Then recent travel, pointing to infection, snoring, pointing to adenoid apatrophy from obesity, wheezing pointing to chronic pulmonary disease like cystic fibrosis or asthma. Uh, asthma should not lead to 
poor growth if it's not very severe, that is not responsive to treatment on time. And that's why we need to know the trigger. You can check my channel for full presentation on otitis media, on cystic fibrosis, on snoring, on diabetes mellitus, on asthma. Here, please check my channel. Even adenoid apatrophy, even on constipation and diarrhea, vomiting, I have presentations on my channel. Frequent infections would be pointing to immune deficiency. We need to ask about the timing of feeding. How about juice? Because kids like juice, and how many times do they take juice per day when a child is being fed you know, with juice all the time, the child will lack nutrients, okay, including coming down with a name. Special diets in the family because of religious belief, right? Vegetarians. When was the solid food introduced? Because sometimes people give food that are not appropriate for the age, particularly after being weaned from breastfeeding. Stooling pattern, any constipation here, any diarrhea here, any undue tiredness pointing to hypoglycemia or anemia or thyroid problem. Breastfed, breastfed for six months? No, that's what I would expect here. Okay, formula fed, yes, that's what I would expect here. And because if you breastfeed for six good months, it's not likely that your baby within those six months will have failure to try. Feeding environment, by who? I have an example of uh, a housemaid that was feeding on a good you know, formula feed meant for the child to be looked after. No, this is a true life story, please. And the parent discovered that the housemaid was gaining weight while the child was losing weight. And then a secret camera was placed in the house and she was caught. She, she will pull the formula field and make a thick one and drink and put a watery one for the child. And when it will be the closing time for the parents to come back home, she will make the appropriate quantity for the child. So for many hours, the, the child will be without the rich formula field. It will be watery. And the house help will be you not know, having the rich one. Imagine. How about child abuse or neglect? Physical examination will involve checking the child from head down to toe. In failure to drive, check for bruises, diaper arch that will be pointing to abuse or neglect. How about candidiasis? Angular stomatitis pointing to anemia and power, anemia, neuropathy pointing to B12 deficiency, particularly in the family, indulging in vegetarian diet based on religious belief or whatever. Abnormal deep tendon reflexes, pointing to cerebral palsy, finger clubbing, recurs, that is lack of vitamin D, calcium, or phosphate. And of course, inflammatory bowel disease will prevent with likely fistula, rectal fistula, or inner tides. On physical examination, we are going to look for physical presentations or signs of malabsorption, like abdominal distension and increased bowel sign. Hepatomegaly will be pointing to glycogen storage disease, liver pathology, or malignancy. Within will be likely leading us to asthma or cystic fibrosis. When we pick more, more would be suspicious that we are dealing with congenital heart defect. And when we check the head and neck region, we can pick neuro anomalies and anatomical defects, like cleft lift and palate. And generally, we check all the features and apprehension or apprehension and we measure the child for weight, height, and length. Generally, we should ask about 
B I N D E. Well, I wanted to skip that, but let me just say it with the word of mouth here, whoever could grab that will go pause the video and then record and mark it there. That is the bed history. That is anything surrounding the pregnancy and the delivery of the child. Okay? Then immunization history, nutritional history, developmental history, and of course the environment. The observation that we need to take is to watch the relationship between the caregiver and the child, the way they are interacting. That will give a clue to what could be obtainable under their own roof at home. We can carry out some tests like soil chloride to rule out cystic fibrosis, thyroid function tests with thyroid stimulating hormone, getting T3, T4 because Thyroid is pretty important for growth and development. No, very, 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 very. So hypothyroidism is a big issue in children and can lead to failure to try. So we need to know what's happening to the thyroid function. So TSH, T3, T4, cytomegalovirus, in case we are suspecting touch from the pregnancy and delivery, Epstein bar virus. Complete blood count, now rule out anemia, steel reactive protein for autoimmune, and of course, erythroid segmentation rate for autoimmune as well. For analysis, we ran microscopic culture and sensitivity, electrolyte, blood real nitrogen, amylase, and lipase in case we are dealing with biliary atresia or pancreatic problems somewhere, HIV screening. No, because it won't let them go, right? Gliadine and transglutaminase in case we are dealing with celiac disease, H. pylori, liver, hepatitis A, B, C, D, antigen antibody with antinuclear antibody. Caprotectin if we are suspecting inflammatory bowel disease. So just you know, do everything until you are able to come down on a definitive diagnosis why this child is not thriving, why this child is not growing well. Then lastly, we can have just one radiological investigation. You might have gamma of them if you are suspecting a particular definitive diagnosis, but you have not yet made you know, that determination based on your history, physical examination, and other laboratory tests you've done. So you can do chest X-ray. You may go ahead with CT depending on what you are suspecting and make your definitive diagnosis and commence the definitive treatment. And with this, I come to the end of this presentation as per failure to thrive or poor weight gain in children. Remember to share and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you.